Upon re-watching the first Avengers movie in order to review and rank it, I found myself drawn to one specific scene, the argument scene, and I watched it over and over again. It has to do with what was being said and to what or whom we should be attributing the nature of these comments that the heroes were making. I had forgotten how aggressive Evans plays this scene as Captain America. It's pretty disturbing. There is something odd about seeing Cap trying to bully Tony Stark here and goad him into a fight. It doesn't really suit his personality. But is it really as simple as saying that it's all because of Loki's staff? A careful rewatch of this scene indicates that it's not. My initial questions going into this are as follows. Is Loki's staff having an effect on them, and to what extent is it responsible for the comments and the aggression we witness in this scene? And secondly, how much control do the heroes have over themselves here? Going down this rabbit hole led me to an interesting conclusion that I hadn't previously thought about, namely that Loki deserves a fair amount of the credit for Tony Stark's decision to wear the gauntlet in Endgame and make the snap herd round the MCU world. This makes Loki a more important piece of the MCU than previously considered, and an unwilling hero. In order for us to test this hypothesis that Loki is the great unknown hero of the Infinity Saga, we have to consider our two initial questions more carefully. Let's tackle our first question. Is Loki's staff having an effect on them, and to what extent is it responsible for the comments and the aggression we witness in this scene? The easiest way to answer this question is by breaking down the construction of the scene from a directorial standpoint. The sound and cinematography are clearly trying to make us incredibly aware of the fact that the staff is doing something. It's having some effect on the people in the room. It's making buzzing noises, and a few times the camera pans over to it to reveal that it is active. Additionally, as we hear the buzzing sound, we see Tony rub his forehead, as if he's growing more and more disoriented. The camera shots also change from straight-on dialogue to odd angles that tell us that something strange is occurring. Finally, the staff ends up in Banner's hands at the end of the scene in a fairly aggressive manner, as if it has achieved its goal of riling up the Hulk, which we know was the crux of Loki's plan from his earlier interaction with Black Widow. So I think we can cross off the easiest part of our first question. The staff is having an effect on them. The second part of our question has to do with to what extent is it affecting them. What I mean by this is that there's a difference between controlling the actions of an individual and simply coercing them into action. Hawkeye is being fully controlled, with just enough agency that he can still interact with those around him of his own volition, but clearly he has little to no actual agency. If this is the case with the Avengers in the room with Loki's staff, then we can pretty much dismiss what they say as simply mind control. They have no agency and thus very little responsibility for what they say and their actions. That would seem to make sense given the fact that Captain America hates bullies and yet he is acting like one. However, I don't think that this explanation holds up when we consider all of the elements of the scene. Let's start with Banner's story about trying to commit suicide. This serves two purposes for us. First, it establishes that the characters, at this point, still very much have control of themselves and what they're saying. There's no real reason for the staff to be producing a story out of Banner that would elicit such a strong amount of sympathy from the others. Remember, Loki's plan is to create a chaotic space from which to unleash the Hulk, not galvanize them through a tragic story. And the quietly focused reactions from those in the room indicate that they are still in control of their emotions as they do not dismiss what Banner says. Banner's confession here is a dark truth, something that was not meant to be shared. That would seem to indicate that the effect that the staff is having is that it's creating an environment that tries to get dark truths to the surface, things that both the speaker and the hearers would know to be true, but under normal circumstances would want to avoid. And that brings us to the Captain America Tony Stark discussion. Cap accuses Stark of fighting only for himself and of not being the one to make the sacrifice play. Upon initial review of this scene, it seems to function mostly as a nice little negative echo of what Stark is ultimately going to be tasked with in Endgame, where Tony actually becomes the guy to make the sacrifice play. But you have to read the body language of the room in order to, I think, appreciate what is happening here. When Cap makes his remark about Tony only fighting for himself and not being the type of hero to lay his life on top of a razor wire so that other soldiers can crawl over him, You've got three important reactions to this that must be considered. First, you've got Fury's reaction, or lack thereof. 
He's not a man who is usually lost for words, so there's a part of him here that is silently acquiescing to what Cap is saying. Then there's Banner's reaction to Stark's quip about simply cutting the wire. Banner gives the type of smirk that can best be described as, come on, not every situation can be disarmed by a clever quip. Captain America also shares in this look with Banner, as if they're both thinking the same thing. And finally, you've got Tony's reaction. Now, earlier in the movie, when Agent Coulson visits Stark and Pepper, we get this joke about Tony's official S.H.I.E.L.D. file, in which it states that Tony does not play well with others. At that point in the film, the line is a big joke. But in this argument scene that we're discussing, it makes a comeback, and it's clearly meant to be taken seriously. If you watch Stark's reaction carefully, you'll notice that his eyes flinch when Cap says that the only thing he fights for is himself. What does this flinch mean? It's a revelation, and more importantly, it indicates that it's something that Stark has not reflected upon and internalized enough prior to this moment in his life. We can continue to build our case here by looking at Stark's response to Cap. Tony says, Everything that is special about you came out of a bottle. If you're a Cap fan and you remember the first Avenger film, you might want to say that's not true. Dr. Erskine specifically tells Steve Rogers that what is special about him is not the serum, but his heart and appreciation for the responsibility that comes with strength. What's important here is that if you watch Cap's body language, he doesn't move. He doesn't flinch. You can't see his face, but he never alters his stance. Why doesn't Cap flinch or respond back to this harsh comment? because he already knows that what Tony says here is true. But the difference is that Captain America has already faced and internalized this. Remember, toward the end of Captain America the First Avenger, Red Skull asks Cap what is so special about him, and Steve smiles and says, nothing. Therefore, when Tony says everything that is special about you came out of a bottle, Cap himself would actually agree with that. So let's pull it all together. Loki's staff has clearly had an effect on the people in the room. It's not an effect, however, that's forcing them to say things that aren't true. They still have control over their minds and emotions for the most part. Therefore, what the staff appears to be doing is creating a space for truths to be told. Dark truths, but truths nonetheless. In this sense, we can surmise that Cap is right about Tony not being the sacrificial hero. At this point. This is obviously something that Tony needed to hear in order to begin the process of internalizing this statement as true. What was a joke at the beginning of the movie is no longer funny. We do see Tony making a sacrificial play at the end of the movie when he gets rid of the nuke, but obviously the more interesting connection has to do with the very end, with his choice to wear the gauntlet and make the snap at the end of Endgame. Therefore, it's Loki who creates the space for Tony to actually begin internalizing the hero that he wants to be, the one who will ultimately sacrifice himself for the sake of the inhabitants of Earth, the hero who will essentially save everyone. So, take a moment and pour out your finest glass of whiskey for the unsung hero of Endgame and of the world, Tom Hiddleston, I mean Loki. What do you think? Leave a comment at the bottom. If I've piqued your interest here, consider subscribing to the channel and taking part in our ranking endeavor. I'm looking for more people to vote and have some dialogue with. If you would like more information about how we're ranking our media, watch the teaser episode at the top of my channel. As always, I really do appreciate your time listening. I'm just your average Joe with Silver Linings Film and Media Reviews. Have a great day.